it's um, not exactly clear whether the attack was successful, this cyber attack, but the European Medicine, Medicines Agency has said today that it's been targeted in one. It's the EU's lead authority for evaluating products such as the COVID-19 vaccines. Um, they've just said that they have been attacked, but they haven't given all that many details as to what was stolen, if anything was stolen, and what damage has been done. A little earlier tonight, I spoke to Emily Taylor. She's the chief executive of Oxford Information Labs, an associate fellow of Chatham House. And I started by asking her what we know so far about this cyber attack and why so many similar cyber attacks seem to be happening lately. We've had warnings from the UK's National Cyber Security Centre back in July. We had um, IBM X-Force, their special cyber unit, warning that the vaccine supply chain, the, the so-called cold chain, had been targeted with cyber attacks. And also an Indian-based pharmaceutical company, Dr. Reddy's, which is involved in the Russian Sputnik COVID-19 vaccine, has also reported that it's been um, the subject of cyber attacks. So this isn't new. Mm. It's obviously disappointing. There's a difference, obviously, between a um, you know uh, a, an individual having a go and a state-backed intervention in this way. Is there any way in, in in determining whether it's one or the other with some of these? <laughs> It, attribution's always difficult. Uh, what we're seeing generally, the trend in, in cyber attacks, is that it's, it's much less likely these days to be the individual having a go. It's very much the domain of organised crime and also state-sponsored attacks. And the, you know, the received wisdom may or not, may not be right, but is that in something like this where the vaccine supply chain and, and here the European Medical Agency in charge of authorising vaccines, you think, well, how is a cyber criminal going to get a payout for that sort mm. of attack? And that leads you to think it might well be state-sponsored. And when you put that together with the National Cyber Security's warning, which, which specifically called out a single team, uh, the APT 2019, which is Russian, then you start to, you know, your eyes start to go to the Kremlin. <laughs> um, the Russian the Russian interference we've known about, the Chinese interference too, we've seen a lot of that when it comes to intellectual property theft. Yes, that's right. Uh, there's almost sort of different profiles of the, the various bad boys of cyberspace, if you like. Uh, Russia, of course, well known for disinformation campaigns, um, particularly electoral interference uh, back in 2016 and, and in the midterm elections in the US. Uh, China, better known for intellectual property theft, although we've been seeing a, a bit of a rise in disinformation, particularly mm. around the coronavirus vaccine this year that's been attributed to China. And then North Korea, more on the, you know, the, the, the sort of crossover between state-sponsored and crime, really. Mm. Um, but but, but on, uh, the warning from the National Cyber Security Centre was very much focusing on Russia. Having said that, you know, Dr. Reddy is involved with the um, uh, Russian uh, yes. vaccine is in a different cyber attack, yep. I should say. Um, and so, you know, it's difficult uh, to, to pinpoint a single uh, culprit or just, suspect there. Just finally, I, I'm really interested in the disinformation stuff, particularly around the vaccine, um, mm -hmm. and the way in which, and we, we were told about it during the announcement about further defence funding uh, that is going into a lot of cyber defences, but also something called the 77th Brigade, which is an organisation within the British Army that looks to counter some of these narratives. Mm. But, and yet people's understanding of what disinformation is, is I think possibly quite limited. It's just Twitter trolls, isn't it? Why is it such a problem, do you think, particularly around the vaccine? What we were seeing, we did some research for Oxford Internet Institute earlier this year on COVID misinformation and disinformation. Um, we were looking at the web environment and what we're seeing is that um, it's not just states anymore, that, that in a way the playbook has been taken up enthusiastically by a lot of you know, far-right groups, um, evangelical groups in the United States and non-state actors. And I think that the inter the, the the damage that we're seeing, you know, 
Um, there was an amazing statistic the other day that, you know, up to 30% or more of people are, are fearful about taking the vaccine or, or wouldn't do the vaccine. Maybe some of this disinformation has a part to play in that. And part of it is the way that disinformation really subverts the business models of the of the popular platforms where you're targeted, where you're given information that you've been profiled to be susceptible to. And the more you like it, the more you interact with it, the more mm. it's going to be seen by other people. And so all of that stuff that works great in a sort of innocent social media environment where popular fun things get loads of reactions, it works too on political and health disinformation and of course the consequences of health disinformation are really serious threats to life and uh, particularly in this pandemic. That was Emily Taylor speaking to me a little bit earlier this evening. She's the Chief Executive of Oxford Information Labs and Associate Fellow of Chatham House on the news that the EU Medicines Agency say they have been a victim of a cyber attack.